There we have an elephant, and you can see, as Fergus was just saying, it's wearing a little hat. It is indeed wearing a little hat. It must have had a birthday party last night or something like that. Um, it is, of course, not wearing a hat at all. It is wearing a collar, which means it must be some research elephant. I'm not sure entirely what research is being done on this elephant or for what purpose, but there we are. Righty, I'm just trying to pick up where we are. We're trying to pick our way sort of out of this marshy region and head across to a spot called Rhino Ridge. And I was trying to get away from a convoy of tourists, but I think we're going to struggle on this road, so we might have to go back towards the convoy. Anyway, we're right near the Governor's Camp airstrip. That's what that wind... There we are. Good. Uh, there over there are some zebra, Thompson's gazelles and a tree. And a piece of carcass sort of within sight. A bone or a skull. Oh, that is a little distressing. Well, well, it's not distressing, it's interesting. Uh, if you go continuously to the right-hand side from there, Fergus, and zoom in on the hill beyond us. Yeah, straight over that way. Uh, no, just to the right of that, in fact. Quite a long way to the right. Sort of over the, there. Yeah, even further right than that. Yes, onto that hill there. There we go. You got those animals there? Mm -hmm. Those are cattle, everybody. And I think they're just outside the reserve. They're being herded by two red shuka bedecked Maasai. There we go. And you can see, of course, that there is no fence between them and us. And so the boundaries of these reserves tend to be fairly fluid here in East Africa. Now, what I was waffling on about when I was talking about the, um, the carcasses all over the place, I'm continuously amazed, and I've been doing quite a lot of reading about it on account of the fact that it so amazes me, but if you think about of this area containing, say, roughly... <coughs> Um, this isn't a camera in my hand. Containing roughly two million migrating animals, each of which lives to roughly, say, 10 years old. That gives you about 200,000 animals that drop dead from old age alone every year. What was that, Louise? Oh. Um, and... So that's 200,000 deaths here, entirely from old age. There's a lot of meat lying around, and that's just the migrating animals. That excludes the elephants and Grant's gazelles and buffalo and giraffe and impala and reedbuck and uh, oroby, the few of them that there are. What it means, of course, is that there's a huge amount of dead stuff around the place, and if you happen to be a scavenger, well, this is a good place to live. There was just a little bit of activity with those gazelles over there. They were jumping about, they were, Fergus. They looked like they might be in the midst of a fight. All right, I think we'd better turn around. I don't trust this road in front of us. It's going the wrong way. We're going to have to follow the convoy until we've got out of this area. We'll say goodbye to our elephant with his party hat on. Bye, elephant, with your party hat. He, of course, is sitting in a borrow pit. A borrow pit, of course, being a pit that is used to borrow soil for the airstrip. Ooh. 
Hello, Exquisite Bliss. You say, how do they get a collar on the elephants? Exquisite Bliss, it's not an easy task, but elephants have a great weakness for peanuts. And so what you do is you lay a trail of peanuts towards a holding pen. And then once the elephant is in the holding pen, you, uh, well, they're also not very, they're quite susceptible to gin. So what you do is you soak the last few peanuts in gin. And then when it eats those last few peanuts, it goes to sleep. And then you put on the collar. And when it wakes up, it leaves with the collar on. It's a relatively simple process. I am obviously talking utter nonsense. You have to dart them. So somebody would come along here, um, fire a dart into its bottom. It would feel a slight prick, and then it would be very tired suddenly, and it would go to sleep. Then you run quickly towards it. Make sure that you haven't given it too much drug. Uh, put on the collar, and then give it an antidote as quickly as possible, and then it will wake up. That's how it's done. There are so many animals on that hill the other side there. There are some wildebeest too, but I don't think... In fact, there's a massive herd the other side. I think it's largely topi, though. We might have to head up there and have an, a bit of an investigation. But it's largely topi. There are a huge number of topi around here. There they are. My favorite antelope of this area. They too are susceptible to gin and will fall asleep if you give them peanuts soaked in gin. Works better with raisins. I don't know if any of you have ever read that book, Danny the Champion of the World by Roald Dahl. It's a wonderful children's story. But they used to drug the pheasants that they would put poach. This is Danny and his father. Soak them in gin. I think. I think that's what they used to do. Good. All right, let's attempt to turn round, shall we, Fergus? Ooh. Might just reverse all the way. I'm being uber, uber cautious about this because, of course, we are a long way from any form of help. Where I might take a chance at a place like Juma when I know that the Opa, the mechanic, is no more than 20 minutes away. I'm not going to do that here. Well, Shadrach, the mechanic, is currently, well, he's fixing Scott at the moment, so he's hours away. Right, on we go. We did spot the cheetah again, by the way. They are, they've turned around and they went back the other side of that nasty marshy area and so we decided to leave them. It's another gorgeous day here. That rain cloud seems to have headed over towards where we live and not towards us. Yes, I think we'll just follow that convoy until we find a road that is better suited to us. Hold on tight, everybody. I all I got there was... Did you hear anything? Oh, right. OK, we're going to head across to Tristan. We don't know what he has, but I think that he is perfectly capable of telling you what he has himself.